All right, this, this picture here is little two-year-old James. He escaped from an unlocked back door from his mother's house in Georgia. And in a panic, the mother called the Forsyth County Sheriff's Office. And what came next was everything uh, really a miracle. Uh, I'm joined now by Judge Phil Bettis, who is being hailed a hero for saving this little boy. We tried to get him via Skype, but we're having some problems with Skype, so he's joining us via phone, via audio. Judge, are you there? I am, yes, ma'am. Excellent. Okay. Tell us what happened. So how did you find out that this little boy was missing? Well, it was uh, late Sunday afternoon. It was uh, evening. It was almost dark. My brother had called. We live, our family all lives fairly close together in this, this community. He said there's a lot of police activity nearby. And then we had a reverse 911 call that uh, let us know that there was a missing child. My mother had passed away in December of last year and I knew that um, her house was abandoned there for all practical purposes. So I said, I need to go check the house, particularly the pool. We just started some renovation work on the house and pool. So I drove out within probably 60 seconds of the, um, of the uh, reverse 911 call. As I drove up on the property, I heard the child crying and screaming uh, nearby and I immediately ran to the, to the pool in the back of the yard. So he, he was in the pool in the deepest part in the center of the pool on his back floating. Oh my gosh. Uh, almost in a spread eagle fashion, but you know, not necessarily panic, but upset. And I told him to, I mean, I wanted to calm the child. And I said, I got you, baby, just hang on a second. And I was able to enter the pool without causing a lot of waves. Now the child just had a diaper and a shirt on. And I've changed a lot of diapers in my <laughs> lifetime. And I know, I know what happens when they get wet. So I was just thinking that could be an anchor at any any moment. Wow. So, I mean, uh, if you hadn't seen this child in the pool, so you, so you heard him first, that's what you alerted you to, to him, or you just thought to go look in the pool area? Uh, the pool was my main concern. There's several outbuildings on the property, so there's a lot of places we would have looked next, but the pool was my biggest concern because of the renovation work, work going on, which is um, started a, a week or so ago. So that was my, my main uh, concern. I immediately saw him there, uh, enter the pool. Gently, he was a little too far away to reach as I clung to the edge of the pool. So I was able to come off and uh, I, I didn't want to create any waves or panic the, the child. It was almost like there's this little movement in the water that brought him toward me maybe a, an inch or two and I was able to grasp his left leg and pull him toward me. And I just pulled into my chest and said, I got you, baby. And we, we just clung to the shore, looking at each other in the eyes for a moment. And uh, I knew it was, was over then. All this happened in you know, less than 30 seconds. It's, it's a, a very rapid, um, rapid pace. Um, fascinating. I just felt the 911 call. I needed to go to the, to the home. I, I've told everybody this. So, so you just got so so this is amazing. You just got the nine one one call, Judge, and you just had this intuition that you needed to go to this abandoned property where the pool was. Yeah, we've we've talked about it. I may get a little emotional uh, about it. it. It's certainly a divine intervention, I believe, and I believe my mom, not living there anymore, it was something that uh, she may have had a hand into. Wow. Unbelievable. If in, in, in judge, I can tell you this, if you hadn't been there when you were there, I'm not sure that little boy would have survived. Um, a little two-year-old probably doesn't know how to swim in a diaper in that the pool. Most, Gosh. The most amazing thing is the diaper did not seem wet. So he almost just had to fall in for a few moments. But I also thought it's almost like a hand's holding him up in the pool. It was really very um, amazing to watch. I mean, if I'd had time, I'd taken a photo because you wouldn't believe the, uh, the circumstance just to think that child would float. I mean, a two-year-old doesn't know how to do that. I mean, a 40-year-old may not. So just a fascinating look like he was being held there. Well, if you don't believe in God, you might after you hear this judge's story and how he rescued that two-year-old. Last question for you, Judge. 
Did you know this? I mean, you said Forsyth County. I actually spent a couple of years in the Atlanta area myself, so I know it's a pretty small community and people know each other. But did you know this mother? Did you know this child before that day when you rescued the little boy? I, I did not. Uh, there, there's a relative, I believe, that lives next door. I did know her. We went to school together back from elementary uh, years forward, so she's lived there a number of years. Um, a fairly quiet individual, no contact in recent recent times so you know no of them but this family um, I think had moved in after and I don't know their circumstance so um, and I the boy not. was in good enough shape you didn't have to give him CPR or anything like that he was laying oh. on his back so he was able to breathe when you found him in the pool right absolutely he was he was in great shape just perfect shape Wow well, I, I really got to applaud you for your efforts here, Judge. I mean, what what a story. Um, I know that you've been talking to a lot of the local media here that are calling you a hero for what you did, but uh, how, how do you take that recognition as a hero? I, I'm not a hero. <laughs> you would have done the same thing I did. I'm no hero. God's the hero if there's a hero. It's not me. Um, and that he called you uh, to, to that pool that day after you got that reverse 911 call. But also, I mean, th it's so great that you had that system, too, in the county with the reverse 911 call. So you literally got a phone call alerting you to this missing boy. Is that that's what happened? Absolutely. And it, I think the sheriff said it went out to like 1,200 homes in the uh, community. So they're able to spot wow. the uh, location pretty precisely. It's it's uh, it was. Uh, remarkable system they should be committed well wow. so yeah. thank god for technology and god himself for bringing you to that little boy that moment and judge as always uh, i want to thank you for joining us here on the law and crime network usually we cover trials maybe we'll cover one that you're a judge on uh, but we thought we should celebrate a a heroic judge and a moment where thank goodness no one died and everyone was is safe so thanks again for joining us it is fascinating to join you thank you so much all right. Well, we uh, we have a lot going on here on the Law and Crime Network. We are covering a trial out of Florida, uh, and that is the James Coley trial. He's the defendant in the case. He is facing two charges of murder, uh, accused of killing Amanda Coley and her best friend, Lindy Dobbins. This is a case where uh, of really domestic violence that has spiraled out of control. He, according to prosecutors, entered this home in a fit of rage, went, going after his uh, strange wife's new boyfriend and in the the in this rage is accused of killing also her best friend and injuring another woman when we come back I'll bring my guest back and we'll go back inside that Florida courtroom we'll be back in just a minute